Everybody. Welcome to Imagination TV Week 19, Episode 92. We are being joined by some rock, tar, rock star mentors today um, for our We Imagine special on Imagination TV. My name's Jumea Mooney. Uh, I'm Anastasia Drage. Um, we attend Beanley State High School. I'm in Grade 12. I'm Grade 9. And awesome. Okay. And Jamea, who else have we got with you there? Oh, yeah. Do you want to introduce yourself, guys? I'm Emily and I'm in year 12. And I'm Deacon in year 9. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, gang. We're looking forward to hanging out with you today. Um, in 10 years' time, what I imagine to help us all create a fairer world would be to um, acknowledge the past and and hopefully we can all move together as one and be treated equally and fair. Uh, yeah, I just hope that we, <laughs> just basically what Mooney said, that there's like no more racism and we don't, yeah, we just all get along. Yeah, I can agree with that. It'd be nice to be able to move to a place where we're, um, not feeling divided by difference of like our skin color, but we see how much we have in common. And hopefully we've, um, we're solving some of these like complex problems on the horizon, whether it's about climate change or what jobs will look like in the future, or maybe even like how you have a happy life. Like some of those things would be nice to work on and spend yeah. some time working on. So that's a cool vision to work towards. We've had this, this uh, week, we've been wrapping on this theme of we imagine as, as you, you both kicked us off with there, and thinking about the world that we imagine in 10 years because we created a our 10th ever hoodie um this year and the theme is uh it says somewhere we imagine on it up here i think and we've said on the back a bunch of the things that we imagine in the next 10 years so one of the things we imagine is zero waste houses so houses being like fully recycled and not creating any waste we'd love to see a world where kids don't feel like they're not spoken to in a classroom but teachers are teaching with imagination in different ways that are, gra are grabbing all kids and Hopefully, we've found a way to get close to eradicating inequality for kids in school. If we can get rid of that in Australia and around the world, I reckon that'd be a pretty cool thing. And then hopefully, youngsters like you guys will be able to take the stage and then solve all the rest of the world's problems and um, and show us all the strength you've got. So there's some of the things we're imagining. Hey, Jamea, I think you're about to do the 60-second challenge with your principal. Are you ready to go? Yep, ready when you are. All right, over to you. Um, okay. Mr. Hanlon. Um, yes, Jemaya. What do I say? Um, what do I say? Oh, um, would you please introduce yourself? Yep, so I'm uh, Matt O'Hanlon. I'm the principal of our great school. It's good to see Anastasia and Deacon getting involved at the early age. And of course, you and Emily as seniors. Yeah. Emily, we big shout out to Emily. She's just received scholarship to the Mater Hospital to be a nurse. How good that is. <laughs> Yeah, the crowd goes wild. To be a teacher. We're not sure how we're going to get into teaching just yet, but if she asked me the right questions and I don't have any hard answers, I should be able to, uh, we should be able to help her out in some ways. She's got a good way with kids, so that should be good. Why do I get those questions coming at me? 
Okay, um, let's start the clock. Um, what is your idea of perfect happiness? Oh, I, I think the main thing is not to search too hard for it. I, sometimes I have an old saying, you know, sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. So I just like, you know, home with my family, a nice uh, morning swim in the ocean, which is always beautiful, nice meals and good people around you. I reckon that's, the, that's perfect happiness. But don't yeah. search too hard. I think if you search too hard, you, you never get there. Yeah, sounds good. Now, good. where would you most like to live? Well, I live at Main Beach on the Gold Coast, and I reckon that's pretty darn good. Nice. So I'm real yeah. happy there. Yeah, I reckon that's pretty good. Yeah. And I've lived all over Queensland, so I've, I've been lucky in that respect to see lots of our great states. Yep. Now, what is the bravest goal you've ever set for yourself? Which was the bravest goal I ever set? Most probably saying I'm going to go to Beanley Eye and stay there <laughs> for 12 years and work with you kids for this long. I reckon that's the biggest goal I've Set myself and I hope I'm going all right. Nice. Oh, okay. Now for um what would your what are your favorite names? Of for myself? Yeah. Well, I'm, most people just call me Matt. When people are angry with me, they call me Matthew. So um, I suppose somewhere in between. It uh yeah, that's my favorite name is what I was called. I've always liked my name, so that's not a bad thing. Yeah. Okay, now what is your greatest regret? Uh, well, I don't reckon you should look too far behind. I think, you know, you can make a mistake, but you just got to move on. So I'm an optimist. I always see the best in things. And sometimes being an optimist means you end up laying in the fetal position, sucking your okay. thumb because you've overestimated things. But the next day you've got to get up and just start again. So yeah. I try and always look forward, never back. Yeah. And, and, and with that, that wraps up the 60 second challenge. What a rich, um, rich engagement, Matt. And yeah, I think not searching too hard for it and trying to find the, the way to, to be happy with what we've got, no matter where we are, is a, a real yeah, surround surprise. yourself with good people, I reckon. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you for joining us um, on the My show. Pleasure. Well done, Jamea. Thank you. Tuck shop Bye. vouchers, send someone up to get them as soon as you're done. Yeah, sounds good. I'll see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. We're going to jump into the um, We Imagine Hoodie Day video and explain what we're doing a little bit more with Hoodie Day this year. And then we're going to catch up with our panel on the other side. We imagine lots of different things happening in the next 10 years and beyond. We've been talking this week on the show about potentially opening a university called Imagination University next year, which would be open for anybody from any age. So if a five-year-old wants to wrestle with big ideas and chase higher order thinking, or a 95-year-old wants to come together, that we'll be able to bring all of these different people together, train them in imagination and organizing change so we can go out there and create that fairer world that we're working towards, including at the pointy tip of that, seeing a world where there's no kids who are left behind in school anymore and that we've, we've really unlocked all the potential of, of young kids in school and made that imaginative, joyful place that we're all sort of dreaming for when we walk into a classroom. So there are a few of the things that we're imagining together as we look ahead. Um, we're talking next week about a pop-up imagination factory. So I really like Willy Wonka. Like I've got a couple of lollies here jamea do you like any lollies yeah i love them what's your favorite um i think my favorite would have to be redskins yeah i think the only challenge with redskins which is a real bummer is it's um it's an the name is an offensive name for indigenous people in america so it's actually what's good and a good learning is that they're actually starting to change the name there there's a team that uh, an nfl team that's called the redskins as well which are looking to change the name so it's good that things are changing. I like the lolly yeah. inside of it as well. My teeth get stuck with it. Do you like it soft or do you like it hard? Um, I think I like them soft. 
Yeah, when you can chew it. And the Milkos are good. You can mix them together. Yeah. Um, so we're looking at an Imagination Factory next week to have this amazing experience you could come into from all over the world and have like a Willy Wonka style turboed imagination um, yeah, experience in the world. And today we're going to wrap a little bit about galleries and what a galleries look like. And one of the ideas we're kicking around in our dream world is, is launching an imagination gallery for young people to be able to have their art careers kicked off and then to work alongside artists all around the world. So that's one of our dreams. We're going to jump into our panel on the other side who are a really cool group of artists and, and thinkers. And then we're going to wrap on the idea of imagination and the world we're imagining for tomorrow. If you don't want to work, don't bother dreaming. Shame is just nothing. All of us are dealt different cards, and those cards can be awful, but it's what you do. You are responsible for your reaction. Alison, Jonathan, Dan, thank you for joining us on the show. Very quickly, um, Alison, tell us a world that you imagine in 10 years' time. What's one thing that you'd like to see come to life? Well, definitely I would like to see more uh, diversity and representation. I think we're, for example, right now we're in the process of looking at the history of galleries and looking at how a few women are actually in major collections around the world and in Australia. And we're trying to address that imbalance. And now we're looking to include people from all cultures. And I guess the biggest thing is we're rewriting art history. It used to have you'd be a linear art history and now we're recognizing that things happen like this all over the world at the same time it's kind of exciting i think it's a time to relearn history from the beginning so i think that's what i'm excited to see the way museums and galleries are going to look in 10 years will be completely completely different yeah very cool hey keep your comments coming through on the chat line we've got angus gallagher saying congratulations emily steffi beck saying well done emily uh, we've got, that was electric, well done guys, coming from uh, one of the comments as well. TDL Credible Light said, Jamea is a natural host. So lots of love coming in from the chat line. Jonathan Zawada, tell us a little bit about what you'd imagine in, in 10 years time and something you'd love to see come to life. I mean, I think I'd love to see us all uh, be a little more focused on things we have in common and finding some, more of our common ground and our similarities. I mean, I'm excited and constantly rewarded by the people I talk to and um, finding out stuff about them and finding areas where we overlap and where we've got things that we believe in that are the same and focusing more on that and less on the differences, I think, something I'm excited about. Yeah, I can get on board with that one. Uh, Dan Single, creative director at AIM, doing a variety of different things, juggling heaps of different work. I have the pleasure of being able to work with Dan day in, day out. And uh, Dan, you have a very open, free mind, which I think is turbocharged with imagination as a full battery of imagination. Uh, what do you imagine in 10 years' time? What's something you'd love to see come to life? Something I would love to see, thanks for that, Jack, anyway. It's a pleasure working with you too, bro. Um, I would love to see all the isms wiped out. Sexism, racism, boredism, let's just get rid of them and just be all one. And I'd love people to start giving a shit about the planet. Yes. That's two things, but yeah. Good. No, that's a lot of things, actually. We'll take those one, two. We'll, we'll, we'll swing back in a minute. Jamea, what's, um, have you got any questions that you want to ask the panel? Um, do, uh, does anybody here have any questions they'd like to ask the panel? Um, sorry. Um, let me, sorry. Let me, let me come back. I'll, I'll, I'll do a loop around again. And when I come yeah, back, I want at least one question. And then one thing that's going to confuse me, that's your homework. Okay. Right. So one, one piece of like unorganized gibberish that doesn't make any sense. Feel free to take that as far as you want to. And then one question. I'll be back in a second. Hey, Alison, when, you, when you're thinking about curating change or, or reflecting on different stories of history, how the heck do we do that? Like if we, if we know what we think is true, isn't that scary to challenge that? And how do we, what do we cling on to when we're making that journey from a world that we used to know to a world that, uh, we think is going to come to life. I think you're right. I think change is scary. And sometimes you've got to throw the baby out with the bathwater and be, be ready to do that, you know. And, uh, for example, with the National Gallery of Australia, what we've tried to do is completely recurate how you see Australian art. So it used to be you'd only see Indigenous art over here. 
and then contemporary Australian art over here. But what we're doing is putting it all together so that you have this idea of a history of what Australian art might look like that includes everything all at the same time. And those things are big things. You have to really think them through because you've got to give respect to all the different players. I think change is scary, but we have to be prepared to throw out old ideas and find new ones. You know, and that that it, that does require young people <laughs> to say, you know what, you thought it all wrong. You thought it in the wrong way. Let's rethink it. Uh, and I think you'll find a lot of people in cultural institutions are trying to do that now. Jonathan, what the heck is imagination? <laughs> uh, that's that's a tough one. I mean, uh, I, for me, it's like a safe space. <laughs> I think it's where I like to go, where. Uh, anything is possible and I can kind of get lost in my own world and not have to worry about all the reasons why not. And I can just focus on all the good reasons why and, and explore those and just keep following those tangents until they sort of reach some sort of end point, I suppose. How do we, um, how do we get the drawbridge down as maybe a grown up as you get a bit older into imagination? Dan, how do you, how do you knock on the door of imagination and walk into the castle of it? Um, I just think to you need to be open to everything. Just know that that there's possibilities are endless, and not everything's been done before. And there's no right or there's right or wrong when it comes to treating other people and how you act. But no idea is too big, and anything's possible. Just go for it. Um, yeah, just be open to all of it and keep your eyes open and just watch and be curious, soak it all in and then create it back. Hey, Jamea, what's curiosity? Uh, curiosity uh, to me is when you're curious and <laughs> like, <laughs> like you're just um, curiosity, like you're unsure and you're feeling, you're just wondering and you want to know. Yeah, wondering is a really interesting way of describing it. Deacon, what do you reckon? Speaking of curiosity, I'm curious to know if you guys, anybody on the panel, knows what the name of our Indigenous room is called. At the school? Yeah, yes. at our school. Oh. No. It's Membanjindi and Anastasia, would you like to explain what that means? Uh, yeah, um, Membanjindi is actually another word for eagle's nest. So, yeah. And is the eagle um, connected strongly to the area where your school is? Yeah. Cool. It's fun fact of the day. <laughs> That's good to learn. Hey, Deacon, what's imagination? Hey. What's imagination? Imagination. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so you can imagine something that you would like to do and stuff, like all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It's almost like a painting of, of the future or something or something we're going to bring to life. Uh, yeah, you're just painting your way through. Yeah. It's like a look through the mirror. Yeah, that's cool. Um, can we train imagination, Jonathan? I think you can absolutely, you can encourage it. I think we can get rid, we can be good at suppressing it, but we can definitely be good at creating space for it as well. And I think uh, that's, that's about just having time uh, and physical space, but also mental space and, and just sort of letting yourself get a little bit lost and, and not focusing on outcomes, but focusing instead on the here and now. And then I think your mind naturally wants to fill that void with imagination. What, um, Alison, what do you think the role of art is in, in our world? Is it, um, is it just a fancy thing that you go to galleries for? Or what, what does art actually do for us? I think art is, uh, is everywhere in our life even if we don't realise it. And I think it allows us to um, see the world in a different way because, you know, like right now we're in this pandemic and things feel very restricted and, and dull, but I would imagine almost everyone is watching television or reading a book or doing something creative and that's how art informs your life, you know, whether you realise it or not. There's so much around you. So I think 
I think art has transformative qualities. I'm a terrible artist, like honestly, terrible artist, which is why I did art history, <laughs> because I love working with artists and I like writing about art. I come no good at making art and that's okay too. Um, it's okay to not be good at it, but I'm super curious about people who are good at it. And I love to read about it and think about it. It, it you know, it makes my world bigger. I reckon one of the great um, like fallacies or one of the great rules which are out there which is just completely wrong is that anyone is a good or a bad artist or terrible at art uh it's just paint like yeah. you can throw paint onto a canvas and then suddenly you throw paint onto a canvas the i think the the fear we have with calling ourselves artists um as people like it there are two big classes mm is really weird like because it's so free when you're a kid like you just sort of play or draw on the ground and like you're being an artist from birth we're all born as artists we're all born as with creative energy with creative spirit in us and I think um yeah to be afraid of there's lots of things which would be bad to be called um, or to be afraid of but being an artist I reckon is almost fundamentally human like we all create and uh, and that's just part of what we do and yeah the that label is is something which be cool if we could challenge a little bit you know I think everyone makes art and makes story and um and I reckon you're a good artist because you can speak communication is an art you know talking sharing stories and, and yeah. all of these things is art and I like writing writing I guess is my art form I'm constantly amazed at people like Dan and Jonathan who can do incredible things and really put themselves out there um and that's what I'd say to these fantastic young people is just be really brave you know don't um we, we live in a really risk adverse culture and we just got to drop that we, what what has this pandemic taught us stop being so scared <laughs> do Does things that, that you've always wanted to do for any of our Beanley high school Beanley school um crew who are hosting today have any of you ever done art or thought about creating things or or had ideas of things that you wanted to work on um yeah just Mostly with like Indigenous camps and stuff, we got into dot painting and stuff and I just thought that was really interesting and I really liked it. Yeah, cool. And then, um, <laughs> oh, I like, I write rap songs and I rap um, like about my life and my problems. Yeah, unreal. Poetry. Yeah, it's an amazing way to, my mum's an artist um, and painted for like, since we were born and conscious, we sort of woke up and mum would be painting out on, um, on our dining room table. And I always got really scared about um, failure and about like me painting or, or getting in trouble because I got it wrong or right or something uh, in my own head. And it's only, t I'm 35 now, three or four years ago, I started painting and it's so fun. Like if you just forget the, like, your own self judgment as idea of failure and you just go for it. Suddenly you you're a rapper. You wrote a rap, you performed it, you're a rapper. Like it's that happens in five minutes, you know. I'm not an artist, I put paint on a canvas, I'm an artist. That's how quickly we can change our outlook and our outcomes of what a life's gonna look like for us. Dan, what um what excites you when you wake up in the morning and you're looking for inspiration? What are the what are the energetic worlds that, that you're attracted to when you think about what a successful life looks like? A successful life, wow, there's two parallel things. I think successful life is just living a life that you're getting to do all of the curious and and things that you want to do, like that interest you, I guess, um, that you be kind to other people in your family and be able to, like, make just enough money to be able to do your pursuits, your creative pursuits and just enjoy, like, have a full life of experience. I think experiencing everything. Um, and for me, inspiration is just everywhere. Like my favorite three stores is a bookstore, a stationery store or an art store and a hardware store. I just like looking at stuff. Um, I take photos of bump stickers. Um, yeah, like weird things in the supermarket packaging, just the way that fonts go, just like everything. I've got folders all through my phone of just, weird and wonderful things that it's nothing like the vintage markets are great but just being eyes open to everything around you because there's beauty all around but you just got to look at it there was a really cool question we had from the host yesterday which is what are you opening your mind up to today what's something new that you're going to try and open your mind up to Jamea, what's something new that you're going to try and open your mind up to today 
Um, uh, something new that I'm going to try after today is... Um, <laughs> oh yeah I'm gonna like try and um aim for my goals for my future and what I'm gonna do yeah that's a good one what does that mean um so like I'm going to to try and see how I'm gonna get there I want to be a cc yeah cool yeah and do you you know what you just did right there was you started to make that future real by painting a story by telling us and then having an audience of people we suddenly now become part of that goal with you and so when you keep a dream inside sometimes it just goes to sleep and it's something that you you talk to when you go to sleep but once you start to talk about dreams or you talk about what you're imagining they start to become real like we might follow up about sorry is it emily is that that's your name isn't emily who's done the raps yeah. So one of our team might follow up now and be like, hey, Emily, do you want to come and perform one of your raps? And suddenly when you speak about your dreams or you speak about your visions and your goals, they start to get in this goop out in the world and we all start to kind of connect in with it and build on it. Jonathan, have you had a moment where you were in a space and an idea or an opportunity came to you and you were brave enough to say, I want to be a part of that and it led to something like gnarly and cool. Can you tell us like one case study of when you were brave and just put yourself forward and said, I think I can do it. Um, and then you got to do something amazing. Yeah. I mean, my entire life and my, my especially my professional life is exactly that just opportunities coming up and, and diving in and trying them, not telling myself I couldn't do them, but like I could go all the way back to the very beginning of my career. And I, I walked around the streets of my neighborhood and I just, I knew I wanted to design stuff. I didn't know how to do it or what I was going to do, but I introduced myself to people when I was probably 14 who had local little businesses that I liked. And I said, I can design things for you. I can design business cards and t-shirts. And and then I did, I got to design some business cards for a couple of businesses, some t-shirts for a local hairdresser. And, and then that just turned into other people seeing those things and asking me to design more stuff. And before I knew it, I, I had a job. I haven't looked back since. Very cool. Very cool. Hey, has anyone on the panel got a question for each other just before we, we wrap up? Uh, Dan or Alison or Jonathan? I've got a question for Dan. Um, I just want to ask you about uh, where you see fashion going now, like the future of fashion, because I think that some of the most creative people I know uh, and dreamers and imaginative people are fashion designers like you. And I think fashion's in a bit of a crisis right now. So I'm wondering what you think about that. What's the future of fashion? Future of fashion, I think, is going to be all about being sustainable. Um, a lot of people are on the journey to it now. And like Caring, who's the parent company for um, uh, the heart, those at Louis Vuitton and Caring Group there and all the luxury brands, their mission is to be completely sustainable, I think, by 2025. Um, I think everyone is going to be doing that, but what we're doing with Reclaim with AIM is taking dead stock or donations and reworking it with art from the kids. That upcycling idea is going to be a big thing for sure because there's a lot of people doing it. It's going to be a lot of people wearing vintage again, um, not producing mass, like fast fashion, you know. I think that's going to die. It has to die soon. Um, everyone has to make an effort to do better for the planet because fashion does some really bad harm at the moment. So style-wise, I think it's just going to keep repeating era after era, just recycling, just evolving into a new style. But I think the main thing is going to be it's going to be better for the planet. Thanks. And I think what you're pointing out is that it requires imagination, right? Yeah. Totally. <laughs> We've got to think bigger and outside the square. Yeah, Jack loves to say this quote, and I hope we get it right. Einstein said, you won't solve the problems of tomorrow by thinking about it. With the uh, same level of thinking as today. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what we that's teamwork, Dan. That's setting them up and yeah. them up <laughs> You got my <them> back. <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. Uh, <laughs> hey, for Jamea and our student audience, is there anything else that, that you all want to take from today or any final questions or thoughts before we wrap up the show? Um, well, I was just wondering if you guys... What do you, where do you guys see yourselves in five years time? Like, do you still pitch yourselves on AIM inspiring young students or like progressing to something different? Yeah, that's great. I'll go last and bring us home. Okay. I'm in it for the long haul. 
We have got so much exciting stuff coming up. We really are going to create a fair world. So this is, I'm going to be with you guys in five years. This is where you find me. Yeah, and at <laughs> mentoring.com. <laughs> Uh, same. I, I love doing this. I love talking to young people. I've got three kids of my own and they're like you, you same majors as you guys and thinking about what they want to do. And that's all I want to do now is um, help them to be excellent human beings. And yeah, it's a real honor and a privilege. So that's me. Hi. Sounds good. Awesome. Yeah. And I think I'll be doing the same sort of thing that I'm doing, but at, at the same time, I really don't know. I like, I, I just want to be open to possibilities and, and opportunities when they pop up. So uh, I've, I've never really had much of a vision for my future. I just like seeing where it, where it goes. See what happens when it happens. And I want to, I want to found the world's first ever imagination university and have kids be able to go to it and get degrees alongside, um, you know, presidents like have Obama there and then have you guys there and then have a seven year old kid from Nigeria there and just have the most gnarly, collection of humanity from all different backgrounds coming together so i'd love to get that going i'd love for us to change the face of fashion around the world to be a symbol that people can believe in um i love and yeah i'd love to be a really good dad over the next five years and i want to be happy and i want to be able to change the world with all of you and, and work really hard and have joy in my heart and i think if i can do that in five years i'll be stoked um so that's what i'm working towards that's and Jonathan, that's we that's might that's have a, um, a senior graphic designer role going, cause so if you're looking for like something complex and something open, we can throw that your way. And then we've got this imagination gallery we're going to work on um, over the next little period as well, which I think Jonathan, you're going to help out with. And we're going to look, work out how we can build this framework for artists to come together all around the world. So a few different things we're working on. Jonathan Zawada, Alison Kubla, Dan, the man single. Thank you for joining us, everybody, and being a part of this show. And thank you to our student audience, Jamea and the crew from Beanley High School. Thank you so much that for having us today. So and shout out to our Hamlin for the tuck shop Ooh. vouchers. Oh, geez, that was fast. What a production <laughs> line. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Awesome, gang. And we've got, we're going to go back to Matt. He's got a drawing he's worked on over the course of the show. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I did a self portrait when you started talking about art. How I go? Yeah, it's brilliant. Archibald Prize material? Yeah, 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 I think it's a start. It's got oh, complexity. I'd love to be able to draw a place from a start point. Awesome. All right, well, thanks, everybody. Have Thank a wonderful you. weekend. We're going to finish up with Cogs to wrap up the Thank day, which is a film we made four years ago to, um, to talk about this complexity of how we can try and have a go at, at really tearing down inequality in education around the world for marginalised kids. And so we made this film with a guy called Laurent Witts who, who won the Oscar for the best animated short a few years before and his team in... France and um and this is what we came up with and it was the first time that we'd launched AIM globally so after that we're now working in six countries around the world and yeah it's nice to sort of look back in time and think about the stuff you've done so this is a film we're very proud of and we'll finish today's episode with that Jonathan and Alison thanks again so much for being a part of the show See ya. thank you See ya. it's very good
Maybe today.